All right, so the other day I was talking about having to change the bolt in the 1640 combine belt. I said, I meant belt. Um, yesterday I put all the lines and all back on the hydrostat. I had two of them that I built. Uh, I didn't want to, the old ones were all right. They weren't leaking or nothing, but I just, they were old and I just needed to change them. In case I got to run it and busted a line or something, let's try to take care of that stuff. But this here is the belt, and I already put it around up there by the hydraulic pump. And you can see, up in here, there's a bolt right there. And well, there's a better shot. There's two bolts, there's a third one on the back side. But what is pulling? does is you loosen those three bolts I don't know if you can see it but stick a bar behind it and that whole pulley will slide to the side and there's a slot in there to be able to get the belt out now in the process of me figuring out how all that came out I turned this pulley so now I got to find my bolt holes again very gently to be able to do so and once i find my bolt holes because i need my other hand i'll go back to filming and show putting them in all right so i got all my bolts tight up in there um in order to get to all three of them bolts you know take your that like little pry bar like this here and in this let me move this pulley up in there, now you can see better. You can see these teeth right here. Just bind it, pry bar down. Bind that pry bar down in one of those teeth right there to start your bolts and you just push down. When you push down, that pulley will turn. And uh, once you get your bolts, one bolt started, you can take a three quarter a wrench and be able to turn it. But if you go do something like this, you better have yourself a three quarter or 19 millimeter, but especially have a ratchet wrench. It'll make your life so much easier instead of having to come in and out all the time with the wrench to tighten it. Makes it a whole lot easier. But the next thing on this end here, if you can see it, it's pull those four bolts out of here. There's four bolts go in there. Just pull those out, and you can pull this plate with a little pilot pump. Uh, that little pilot pump right there. Just pull the whole plate back. And once I get that belt on, because I got to use both hands again, then I'll be able to show putting those bolts back in and tighten down the pulley. All right, so I got the belt. <clears throat> I know there's a bunch of close-up shots, but I'm six foot two and I'm in a small hole, so I ain't much bending for me. Um, but you can see, get shot. this pulley right here goes on top of the belt at the top, and I tighten down. There's four bolts in here, and I tightened down already two of them. And what I did is I had the belt on. And then I uh, about fell off my special mechanic two five gallon bucket I'm standing on. But what you do is you uh, just tighten down those four bolts. And once you have those four bolts tight, another thing you go cut this hands eventually <clears throat> turning these wrenches but like this get back further this piece of sheet metal that I got my fingers on will cut you wide open I had to go get stitches in my arm my wrist last year over a piece of shape sheet metal and it cut me so fast that I didn't even know I was cut till uh, I'd say 30 seconds later when I saw the blood 
but all you got to do is tighten down those four bolts on this collar right here and then once you get the belt and all back on you got a tensioner right here it's a spring-loaded tensioner you just tighten down these two bolts I mean don't tighten them down but take the slack out your belt and when you tighten it down it'll pull this pulley down your tensioner pulley and there you go uh, another thing before I forget to get this pulley to slide up in that housing you got to take your sensor it's a speed sensor right here um, you got to take it out, uh, not out but get it out far enough to where it's not touching anymore and then once you get it out and you you know you're gonna have to readjust it when you go back in normally it's about like a business card width but uh i unplugged it all that way i could twist it round and round and round in there to get it to come out but all i did another thing is it's got a lock uh nut right there oh i didn't even i didn't even loosen the lock nut so i know where my depth or how deep that sensor went in there before and all i got to do is tighten it back down like i am right now till i hit that nut but that's how you change the auxiliary pump drive belt on a case international 1640 all right one last thing in the book here there's an old book coming to come on it says compress spring length to spacer length on outside of spring spacer should still turn you got to readjust it when the gap becomes 0.7 inches that's about 0 0.7 it's about 13 16 7 eighths of an inch uh, but somebody and it wasn't me somebody this is the spacer and you got a spring in here because this thing is supposed to when you pull down on the belt that belt's supposed to flex and be able to move on its own but instead of somebody putting the spacer back on there's your piece of galvanized pipe uh, like i say i didn't come up with that but i probably would have um but uh i mean that's how you adjust the belt I mean, you don't want it you kind of figure you know most time when you put a belt on that doesn't have these slack type springs on it you want it pretty tight um but this one here is supposed to flex and move so i'm probably gonna run it like this and then once it starts to wear down i'll go ahead and uh tighten it down some more I might go ahead and I might call the case people and find out how long the space is supposed to be. And that right there would tell me also my spring length of what it needs to be at. Um, but it is what it is. But that right there is how you do it, how you adjust your belt after you put your auxiliary pump drive belt on. And by the way, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to the channel. Thank you.